Greetings folks, I am Zazibar, and today I'm here to do another comic book review. Um, and today we're going to be reviewing Godzilla number one. Uh, this is IDW's kinda sorta reboot to their Godzilla line. Um, last year they put out three different Godzilla books, um, both of which ran for, uh, three, oh, all three of which ran for, uh, different durations, um, or runs I guess you call them. Uh, Kingdom of Monsters was a full-fledged series, and that ran for about 12 issues, I think. Um, and uh, it ended a couple, I think it was either last month or a couple months ago, I forget, but it ended recently. Um, and they're only starting to put it out in trade, and I've already reviewed the first trade um, uh, about two months ago. Um, and I didn't really like it. Uh, in fact, I called it rather awful. Um, but then they did another series called Godzilla Gangster... Gangsters and Goliaths, I believe it was called. And I haven't actually sat down and reviewed that, because I actually don't haven't read all of it. I have the bulk of it, but um, I'm missing issues here and there, because my comic shop was a little inconsistent in getting in shipments of these Godzilla series, because they weren't exactly the top sellers. Um, so I read most of Gangsters and Goliaths, like I got the general gist of it, and that was much better. I actually really liked the premise of that, but um, my only problem with that book, and really my main problem with uh, Kingdom of Monsters, is that Godzilla's barely in it. He's not the central monster. Really, Gangsters and Goliaths should have been called Mothra Gangsters and Goliaths, because she was the main point of that entire series. Um, otherwise, Godzilla was only in it because his name is in the title. That's the only reason he's in it. And he only shows up for, like, two issues. Um, but again, I like the way he's used and how he's used is kind of, sort of, well, not he. I like the way that Mothra and the other monsters are used, including Godzilla. They're, they're used as kind of weapons um, in a detective's war on the uh, Japanese crime, uh, I think it's the Japanese mafia, but it's, it's basically a Japanese crime syndicate. Now, that's really cool. Um... And uh, definitely original, uh, but I wish I wish it would have been more focused on Godzilla. Like I wish they could have worked Godzilla back into it, or they should have just called the book Mothra: Gangsters and Goliaths, and not even had Godzilla in it. Or he could have been referenced, but he didn't have to be in it um, as the central monster because he really wasn't. Um, anyway, after that little rant, uh, there was one other series that I haven't read at all, um, which is Godzilla Legends. Um, and from what I can tell, it's some sort of origin story for each of the main monsters in the uh, IDW Godzilla books, like Rodan, Mothra, and Geras. Uh, I don't think even Godzilla himself has uh, has his own issue, but uh, I think each monster gets their own solo issue, which th I think that's cool. Um, I haven't heard great things about it, um, but I, I'm still interested to read it, so I'll probably get it in trade. Um, so now let's jump into this new book that just started this month with uh, Godzilla number one. Uh, I guess this is a reboot. Um, nothing in the in the book itself references events that I read in uh, any of the series uh, that IDW uh, had published previously. Um, they ba this book basically just has Godzilla established um, as a threat. Um, there's slight hints that it might be in the same continuity as Kingdom of Monsters and Gangsters and Goliaths because um, a lot of the monsters that were featured in those books are featured here, like Rodan, Angiris, Batra, uh, Kumanga, um, and of course Godzilla himself. Um, so I, I think we can safely assume that it doesn't really matter. Like this is just, if you know Godzilla, you can jump into this and have no no <laughs> no problems with continuity. I just dropped the comic on the floor. Um, so let's jump right into it. Now, I haven't really, as I, as I explained earlier in a rather long-winded way, I wasn't loving what they were doing with the character. Um, so I was very excited to see that they were doing a new series. Um, and, wow, this is so much better. Um, Godzilla number one is very, very good. Um, it's The big thing is that it's a lot darker than the other series were. Um, the other series weren't really like campy, I wouldn't call them, but they were goofy. And they were kind of... They kind of jumped all over the place in its tone. When it needed people to die in a serious manner, it did that. But then it also had people die in comical matters, which doesn't work. Um, it's an inconsistent tone. Um, especially when the people you're killing off comically aren't like really villains or antagonists or even really perceived as bad people. Um, 
So it's it's strange to have that. It's an inconsistent tone. Um, this, however, has a very consistent tone, and it is a dark one. There is humor in this book, don't, don't get me wrong, but it's the kind of humor you would expect to see in a dark Godzilla movie. This is very, 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 you know, kind of connected to um, the Godzilla film series. Um, and it's not in terms of, like, continuity and references, but, like, just the tone and the style is very Godzilla. Um, this has a very similar tone and... People might lynch me for this, but I would call this having the same tone as the original Gojira, or at least a very similar one. Um, the addition of other monsters uh, kind doesn't really add to that, but the thing that really makes this um, stand well comparing it to films like the original Gojira is the fact that we have a very dark go uh, characteriz characterization excuse me, of Godzilla here. He's killing people. Uh, he uh, with no mercy. Uh, me and me and uh, Adam Noyce talked about this in our Godzilla chat we did a few months ago. Um, in that Godzilla, in that in the original Godzilla, um, Godzilla was just walking through Tokyo, unemotionally destroying the city. The only emotion you really got out of him was rage, um, and that was of course done in that film with the uh, his eyes always looking down and they don't really look. Um, at any particular object. It looks unemotional and it looks animalistic and angry. Um, and this Godzilla is also very much that way in this particular book. Um, he unemotionally destroys Washington, D.C. Um, I'm going to somewhat spoil this, so if you have intentions of reading it, I do recommend that you're reading... You know what? Since I'm actually recommending people read this, I'm actually going to not spoil it. Um, only because... I want this to be a review that's going to get people to read this, since I know there are a lot of people like me who weren't really on board with the whole IDW Godzilla thing. So I'm going to not spoil this book only because I want you to read it. Um, so, okay, no, non-spoiler review. <laughs> I know, I really should have had some forward thought with this, right? Um, well, not so much. Um, anyway, so, yeah, the book is very... It's very it's a very well-toned book with what Godzilla is. Um, and... You know, it's not very it's not very um, science fiction heavy, which is good. Um, I mean, to be fair, IDW's previous series didn't really have a very highly science fiction feel to them, but they were you know they were goofy. Um, this is dark, and it's very it's very realistic and gritty. And uh, again, it fits in with what the original Godzilla was and what you know good dark Godzilla movies were, like Godzilla 1985 and Godzilla vs. Biollante and GMK. Um, and it stands out well with those, which is good. Um, really the thing that, um, impressed me the most, I think, was the, um, again, the tone, um, the fact that the characters were much more likable than what we saw in the other series. Um, we mainly follow this, um, ex-mercenary, uh, I guess you could call him, um, well, he has another name, let me, let me find, uh, what he actually did for a living. He was some kind of military, um, military guy, um... He was, okay, he was just a soldier. All right, uh, <laughs> that's just what they label him. He was an ex-military guy. I I'm going to say an ex-mercenary only because um, he seems like that kind of guy that didn't really care who he killed as long as he was paid well. Um, so his name is Boxer. Um, and what I like about Boxer is that um, he's kind of... Um, uh, he's kind of a surrogate father to this other girl who's in the story. Um, and we start to learn a little bit about his backstory... Um, kind of on the fly as he's dealing with the threat of Godzilla. Um, what's very cool um, about this is that they very much so connect um, this guy Boxer with Godzilla. Um, and there are a couple of really uh, neat ways they do that. They have, have his backstory tie into Godzilla. I'm not going to re reveal how. I want you to read it and find out. Um, they are... Uh, also, um, they connect, again, they connect his backstory to Godzilla, but they also connect the world he's currently living in with Godzilla. Um, the other reason why I think this might connect him with Kingdom of Monsters and Gangsters and Goliaths is because, um, they talk about, um, but again, this could also just be perceived as this being a, in a universe where Godzilla is already established. Um, in that they, uh, what am I trying to say? Oh, they, that they, um, they kind of are trying to create a world that can't be destroyed by Godzilla. And let me explain how they try to do that. Um, I really like how they're trying to what's called monster-proof buildings, which um, 
I think it's very funny, but uh, it, it, it's also a cool little... Uh, it's an original idea. They try to make buildings um, that would be more safe to occupy in a, God, in a Godzilla and other giant monster um, inhabited world. Um, if you, I mean, they're trying to get it so that way the buildings are harder to knock over and that people who live inside have certain areas in the building they can do, go to where they'll be safe in case of a monster attack um, or safer. Um, uh, in, in this case, they talk about this, the, uh, the fire stairs being safe. Um, and, um, yeah, I think it's really cool. It's definitely, again, original. Um, I like that uh, the world is trying to, you know, kind of admit that these monsters exist and we have to deal with it. A lot of the times, even in the Godzilla films themselves, it was usually just, like, the normal world with monsters in it. Um, that wouldn't happen. If there were a lot of giant monsters in the world, you would have the governments of the world trying to make a better world that can live with that. Uh, I mean, when we deal with natural disasters, we have, uh, you know, um, like, uh, especially the hurricanes and stuff, we have um, towns made that they can kind of withstand it. We have storm shelters, we have bomb shelters, stuff like that. It's all trying to cope with a world that's being changed by certain um, dangerous elements. And in this case, we have, you know, Godzilla and other giant monsters, and I really like that. It, again, it, it adds to the classic theme of making Godzilla and his, uh, his cohorts, I guess we'll call them, a force of nature. It's very well handled, in my opinion. Um, and overall, I just like the way Godzilla is characterized, again, as sort of um, uh, an unemotional destroyer, um, the, a harbinger of death, if you will. Um, and I really like um, Boxer's line when he says um, that the reason why Godzilla is attacking Washington, D.C. is because he's following... He, this isn't actually the physical reason why, but it's an interesting uh, metaphorical way to look at it. Um, he says that Godzilla is following him because death is following him. That he cannot escape um, death and hell on earth, as he puts it. Um, it's um, Godzilla very much so symbolizes destruction and death, and just um, he's kind of a demon in this, a, a bringer of a bringer of doom and destruction. Um, and I really like that. Um, it's kind of sort of um, a subtle. A, maybe perhaps a subtle way of bringing in the nuclear allegory, but it's, it's sort of more generalized in this. Um, um, into death, uh, death and destruction following wherever Godzilla goes. Um, this, wherever he goes is doomed. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Um, I like a line in this in the book where uh, someone says that before, barely before Godzilla even entered the city, they declared Washington D.C. lost. Um, I really like that. Um, I think it's a clever idea and a clever line, and uh, that it certainly shows that uh, Godzilla, can, even even after all this preparation of them with the buildings and everything, you cannot stop Godzilla no matter what. Um, and that's ultimately where this book leads to. Um, what I also like about this over the other series IDW was doing was that it's got a clear goal. Um, it's not just meandering uh, like I, th I felt Kingdom of Monsters was. Um, and Gangsters and Goliaths, not so much, but a little bit. Um, this is a much more focused and um, centralized story. And this is certainly going to be an ongoing series, but it feels like it's got a reason for it. It's not just, okay, we're going to write Godzilla and we're going to do generic Godzilla stories. No. They're trying to do something with this book. Um, and I'm going to let you find out what that is. Um, so I'm not going to spoil what exactly the point to all this is, but it's it's really cool. Maybe not very original for what we saw in the films, but original for comics, and certainly original for what IDW has been doing. Um, it's really, really cool. Um, and I also got to give the book props on another front. Um, uh, this is... The book opens uh, in Mexico, and uh, there's um, two men getting married. Um, there, it's a gay marriage. Um, and what I really, what I really like, is that it's not shoving that in our face. Um, it kind of subtly puts in that these these two uh, homosexual men are getting married, um, and it doesn't. He doesn't even say that. You're just left to the panel show it to you. It doesn't say. Uh, no dialogue is said that, oh, the, this is different because it's a gay marriage. No, it's just um, pe two people who love each other, and they're, t they're pulled away from each other by the monster attack. Um, it's not Godzilla. Um, this attack uh, happens because of uh, Kumanga. Um, 
and I really like I really like the idea of um, these monsters not just um, that it can that it can happen to anyone that uh, no matter who you are or um, you know who you're in love with that your loved ones will be taken away from you by these monsters and that they won't stop unless you do something to stop it and that's ultimately where this book comes to but I'm, I'm gonna leave that for you to read um, but again I like the subtle integration of the gay marriage and its implications that um they're just like everybody else and that uh if you lose your loved one it feels you you, f you still feel the same pain um and that you, you need to you need to feel um satisfied when you relinquish that pain um i really like that and i also really like the implication that um these monsters are affecting everyone and that something needs to be done to stop it um overall a very solid start to um Hopefully, a much better off a Godzilla series than what what IDW has been doing. Um, so far, it looks very it looks very very promising. Um, I'm really interested interested to see where they go with it. Um, I'll talk about the arc uh the, the arc the art uh really quickly. It's got a really badass cover. I'm sure I'm showing it now on the screen. Um, that cover is very cool. That god that particular Godzilla design looks to be channeling GMK and maybe even the original Godzilla. Um. Though inside, it seems to more be channeling the Heisei Godzilla. Um, but on the cover, that's a very GMK-looking Godzilla, and uh, very, very uh, cool for it. Um, that, that, that particular design is a great design, so this is also very cool. Um, Godzilla's a little shorter than perhaps um, that perhaps I'd personally like. Uh, or at least on the cover, he appears to be shorter, but uh, in, inside, he looks about your typical Godzilla height. But um, on the cover, he looks a little short, but it's not a huge problem. Uh, it looks like he's bending over anyway, so not really a big deal. Uh, but what's especially cool about this cover, you, you can't see it from what I'm showing, but it's a it's a double it's a double sided cover where if you pull the back cover um, over, it's a, the second half of Godzilla's body and the rest of the city. So that's very cool. And overall, it's very well reflective of the book's tone. Again, it's darker and it's uh, more grounded in real. Excuse me, more grounded in realism than uh, IDW's previous series. Um, so overall, a, ve a very solid start to IDW's new series. Um, and hopefully uh, they'll, they'll keep on this path uh, for however long they have the Godzilla license. So um, overall, it's much better than what we've been getting, and I highly recommend it to G fans, and really anyone who's looking for an interesting new comic book. Um, I really can't think of any reason why uh, non-G fans would be able to just pick up and read this. Um, I think as long as you have a basic knowledge of who Godzilla is, you should be all right. That doesn't really come out and say, you know, who he is and uh, uh, why he is the way he is. Um, like, I mean, you can clearly tell he's a dinosaur from the cover, but like, if you didn't know the nuclear radiation thing or anything like that, um, I think you'll be okay as long as you at least know that. Um, at, at least as long as you know that he was a dinosaur or radiated by nuclear radiation, um, then I think you should be all right. Um, or even I'm, I'll bet they'll explain it later in the series. So um, I think if you're if you're looking for a good um, dark kind of um, not really depressing but a satisfying story, um, I say pick this up. It's it's great stuff. Um, so I would say I would say non G fans and G fans especially read this. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Uh, I've got a couple of, of announcements to say before I go. But uh, before I go, I guess I'll give this a rating. Um, given this, this is a single issue and the start to a series, it's kind of hard to rate. Um, I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I really, really liked it. Um, I just want to see where they go with it. Uh, there were a couple spots where the writing was a, perhaps a little off. Um, like I felt like they were bordering on. Uh, I can't pronounce the writer's name. It, it looks like a Swarsinski. Uh, I can't pronounce his name, but he he seems to be channeling Frank Miller for some reason. He. He writes his characters in a very kind of um, Frank Miller Batman kind of way, and uh, it, it's a little distracting. But um, overall, it's not too bad. Um, uh, but I'm gonna give it a four out of five. Um, I can't. I just want to see where they go with it, and hopefully they'll go to a better place than they've been doing. Um, so a very promising start. So four out of five. Um, so a couple of announcements before I go. Um, uh, one ZGC. Um, it's already late, so. Uh, I guess I'll just fess it now. We have me and Gorzard have not even sat down and recorded the '98 review yet. Um, the reason beca is because of uh, mainly me. Uh, 
because I just haven't had the chance to sit down with Gorzard and the um, our guest host who's uh, replacing Adam this month, um, or filling in for Adam, I should say. Um, uh, so we, I haven't been able to sit down with those two guys and record it. Um, I haven't even had the chance to sit down and watch the movie in full. Not that I'm saying it's going to be a fun experience, but uh, I, I really think that I think the best thing to do would for would be to uh, take June off from ZGC um, for a couple reasons. For one, I want to start getting deeper into working on my Godzillathon for next month. So uh, I really need to sit down and pad that out and finish it up and get it ready to go. So um, I want to focus on that this month. Um, also, um, I've got a, I've got some school stuff I need to wrap up, and uh, you know, trying to get my Godzillathon done on top of that is going to be hard. So uh, I'm going to say that we're going to take this month off from ZGC just just um just for this month um, only because of uh, of uh, reasons that I might not be able to sit down, record it, and edit it. So um, June is uh, not going to have a ZGC. Um, but maybe if I can get Gorzard to. Uh, to maybe agree with me, um, maybe I'll even have you guys. Uh, maybe I'll even have two episodes for you guys uh, next month. We'll see. Um, but anyway, uh, so that's one announcement. So um, we're gonna take uh, June off from ZGC. Um, uh, the second announcement I want to make is that uh, um, we now have unlimited duration on our videos. If you haven't noticed, um, ever since I uploaded the uh, Amazing Spider-Man chat with um, Lego Maniac. Um, I'm sure you all noticed that I can upload videos over 15 minutes now, yay! And uh, I can upload videos that are like an hour long or two hours long. Hell, the Gamera chat was two and a half hours long. Um, and for those of you who actually sat through the entire thing and watched it, I thank you. Um, we put a lot of work into that, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, uh, so yeah, that's that's a plus. So this this video is definitely over 15 minutes by now. So now. Uh, I could upload this in just one part, so no more parts, just full videos. Um, so that's that's very cool. And uh, I did have to delete some videos to get to there, because um, YouTube has this weird thing where they, uh, where they, if you have cer a certain amount of uh, third-party match st uh, strikes on your channel, that they won't let you do unlimited duration. I don't know why that is. It's I think it's kind of stupid, but um, whatever. I got to do what I got to do if I want to get unlimited videos, uh, unlimited duration on videos. So I definitely want to do that. So um. I think it's worth it. Um, so sorry for the deleted videos, but I think it's ultimately going to be beneficial to the channel in the long run, uh, especially for ZGC. And then when I bring ZMR back, it's going to help. So uh, that's that's certainly uh, um, that's certainly uh, worth the worth the uh, the, the sacrifice. Um, so ZGC off this month and a limited duration on videos. Yay! Um, so the final announcement is uh, more not really an announcement, more of a thank you and uh, an advertisement for uh, a friend of mine. Uh, I don't I don't like to do advertisements on this channel only because uh, I like to keep focused on uh, you know getting reviews and stuff out there and just talking about uh, you know talking about you know movies and stuff. I don't really like to do advertisements for myself or really any anyone else. But uh, um, but um, I'll do I'll do it. This this one's only be, mostly as a thank you to um uh, Lego Geek four thousand seven six one for um, uh giving me a shout out in his recent video. Um, so definitely check, definitely check Lego Geek out. He's a great guy. Um, he's got some cool music up there. So uh, definitely check it out. Um, I'll put a link to his channel in the description. Um, so definitely check him out. Um, he's very cool. Um, and uh, thank you for the shout out and the advertisement. I really appreciate it. Um. So thank you to you, and uh, thank you to everyone else for listening to this uh, kind of long-winded review of a single issue of a comic book series. But I appreciate it, and um, thank you for you guys keeping up with the channel. Um, look out for more stuff in the future, especially my Godzilla-thon and more ZGC monthly reviews, and eventually the return of ZMMR, I promise. Um, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you soon.